actually works. <laughs> morning, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm tired. Recovering from the weekend. Oh yes, we had to run CP and everything. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm, I'm young. I, I can I can always bounce back. That's right. That's right. As we do, as we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. There's people joining. Yay. How, how about you? How are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm good. It's going to be a busy day, so <clears throat> this is a good way to start it off. I was actually on a call at 6.30 this morning as well. I don't normally do that, mm -hmm. but it happened today. So. I understand. <laughs> yeah, my day's going to be busy, too. Got a lot of school to do, so that's always a good thing. Exactly. Exactly. So... Let's see who else, who's joined us here. Well, I got some of my friend. I got my my friend from the unit, uh, Holloway. He's here. What's up, Holloway? My girlfriend April's here. April Ooh. is one of the top stunt women in Hollywood, and I I am actually mm -hmm. going to go as far as to say is in the world because she is. Um, she is one yeah. of the. Reasons I became a stunt woman. I love you too, my brother. So, hi, April. Thank you. So, I'm gonna get, we're gonna uh, kick this off. I know, I know you. I know you got thirty minutes before you have to go to your yep. other meetings. Yeah. Hey, Craig. Well, uh, starting off, uh, would, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell people who you are and what you do. Well, I'm sure I'm Marjean Holden and I have been an actress for many, 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 many years. Um, let's just say more than <clears throat> more than 20, less than 50 <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, have. Yeah, April, that's true. It is true. Yep, you are. So um, now I am focusing on producing and writing and directing. And yes, uh, Yannick, uh, Jan, uh, Jan, Mortal Kombat. I've been in lots of feature films, um, television shows. I've led motivational workshops, uh, basically trainings actually for 17 years, more than 17 years. And yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell. I've traveled all over the world and had the great fortune of teaching a lot of amazing people from a lot of different cultures. So it's been really fabulous to be able to travel the world and, you know, see that everybody has basically the same, you know, the same makeup, you know, everybody wants to do what they want, be happy, and, you know, live, live a good life, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I can't test that because I remember when I was in Lafayette, I see people were trying, were, uh, just, they're, just, they're just like us. They want to live their uh, best life too. Yeah. Yeah. They, we, don't speak the same, we don't speak the same language. We, we all have the same mindset. Yeah. That's awesome. So for, for the friends of mine that have joined us, um, Tariq was, uh, is, I guess you never are a was when you serve in the service, you always are. So, yeah, absolutely. yeah so tell, you know, for those of, of my friends that have joined us, tell mm -hmm. them uh, what branch of the um, military you served in. I am, the best, I am the best branch in the military, United States Marine Corps. I am in, <laughs> I am in the reserves. I have aspirations of being a Marine officer, but I also have, I have so many aspirations. I don't know what I want to do at this point. Right. So I, as I said, I am still young, so I still got some time to figure that out. But I can tell you my biggest passion is motivational speaking at this point, because I found that since I learned so much about being motivated and doing that, I want to <laughs> share the knowledge with other people because some people are finding a hard time to find their own motivation, find their own drive. Yeah. I thought I can at least, you know, show them that there is light in a tunnel. Yes. Some people think that there's no light in a tunnel. It's just like, oh my God, I'm keep going in this dark path forever. But there's always there's always a silver lining. There's always light in a tunnel. You just gotta, uh, you know, just know which way to uh, step off first. Yeah. Yeah. 
And sometimes that's not always easy, you know? <clears throat> Some people go, oh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to go. What, which way do I go? And, mm -hmm. you know, so what would you say to someone who, you know, doesn't know which way to go? And then I'll tell you what I would say. <laughs> oh, so, mm. <laughs> the, uh, for me, who, who's that? Yeah, who else is? is I, I mean, because, oh, oh, yeah, right. So, or what I'll say is, um, for, for me personally, mm -hmm. what I learned was have a strong focus on what you want. Okay. There's, there's going to be people who's going to tell you you can't do that or you can't do that because this, that, and the fifth. Like they might say, oh, because you're a guy and, and trying to go into this field or you're a female trying to go into this field or because you, your mistakes you made in the past, you can't do it. Like you're going to deal with that a lot because unfortunately that's part of life. But it's not it's not what they say. It's what you respond to. That's what that was the biggest lesson I had learned is, mm. yes, too much is going to talk, but I don't have to respond to everyone. Let my, let your actions do more speaking than your words. You know, you, you know, you got this. You ain't got to tell nobody you got this. Just let your actions do all the speaking. Eventually, people will learn to shut up. That's what I learned. <laughs> wow, that's good. I mean, and I suppose being, I've never served in any of the branches of the military. My dad was Army. So <clears throat> he fought in the Korean War. And, you know, it's always interesting because those who I know in the military, they just go and they, they just do it. You know, they just go and they do. And they don't necessarily always say, oh, I'm going to go do this. They just go, go and do it, right? So mm -hmm. for those who don't have that kind of training, sometimes, you know, when I'm in my trainings or, or you know, moving people through, maybe they're at a block or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's take a step, just take a step, right? Take a step towards, you know, even if it's, you know, even if it's something that you may not be like, oh, yeah, I want to do that 100% or, yeah, I, I really want to do that thing. The only way we know the things we like is to actually do it, right? Right. Because you might not know that you like something unless you actually go and you have the experience of it and then can actually mm -hmm. say, yeah, you know what? I didn't really like that. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go and I'm going to put my energy this way as opposed to over that way. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, no, you're, you're exactly right. Cause I, cause like you said, you're in the, you're in stunt work as well. Yes. That's why I want to ask. Like, cause I know stunt work and being, and being in martial arts is male dominated. Uh, what's it like for you in that, in male dominated industries and your, your U S female in male dominated industry. How do you, uh, find your drive to keep going forward. Cause I know I'm probably sure somebody told you, Oh, don't, don't do it. Or you can't do it because of you being female. You know, I was really in a fortunate position and um, April might be able to speak to this as well, but I was in a really, really fortunate position within the stunt world because I came in to the stunt world as an actual actress. I was an actress before I ever did stunts. Right. And then through acting and being in the industry, met people like April who were already involved in the stunt industry. And so mm -hmm. I already had in my mind some people that I knew were out there doing it and the females that were out there doing it. Now we're in a very in a different category because, you know, April and I are, you know, we're both black. So there at that time were not very many black female stunt players, right? Especially mm -hmm. that had acting skills as well. So I was on set of a movie acting and the stunt and the stunt coordinator showed up because his wife was doing stunts on the film. Right. And he was like, hey, you, like you're kind of handy, you know, like you can fight mm -hmm. and you're really athletic. And if you ever want to do stunts, let me know because I'll actually, you know, I can introduce you to some stunt coordinators and help you, you know, he's like, 
you know, and it was really funny because the way in which he said it was like, oh, I know you're this big actress and everything, which I wasn't, you know, <laughs> at that time, mm -hmm. I was still starting my career. I was like, it was 19, um, you know, 1991 or something like that, you know, <laughs> so I had just started my acting career, really. But, wow. <clears throat> you know, it, um, I said, yeah. Yeah, I, I can do some stunts if that's, you know, what do I have to do? And he kind of took me under his wing and said, you know, well, I'll, I'll get you jobs that, you know, aren't going to be too um, dangerous to start out, right? Like stuff like that. So, yeah, it was really amazing. That's, that's actually very inspiring. You coming in already with some experience. It puts you ahead of a lot of other people who try to start out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was fortunate. I was really, really fortunate, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, but then every single stunt person that I know has a specialty. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 I know I got, I got a lot because I, I also go onto the path of empowering women as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what words would you give to any woman going to a male dominated uh, society? But, uh, workforce or to a guy going to a uh, female dominated workforce what advice wow. would you give me? <laughs> um i just have to say you know if you're passionate about it and if you if it's driving you don't let that stand in your way mm -hmm. you know just do your absolute best and as long as it's filling you you know it's filling you with joy and it's filling you with you know that that inspiration keep doing it it doesn't matter whether it's male dominated or female dominated if that's what you are choosing to do yeah there may be some speed bumps in the road but those speed bumps just make us stronger that's it yes it does and while when you was uh, speaking you said you know oh because you're coming into the sun field and you're you being black and you also being a woman, it also makes it uh so of course somebody might look at you side eye because like my friend Holloway who was just in who was in here, I'm not sure he's still here. Uh huh. He, he's a Lance Corporal like me, and he's a he's a artillery gun chief, and I recorded a video of him doing his thing. I'm like, look, I bet somebody told him he could he would never be a gun chief, right. and it was a video of this guy, his arm up, fire, boom, he's doing it, uh, he's doing his thing, he's leading, yeah. and he got a fast sergeant behind him, he's like. Okay, you got this. It's your gun now. I'm just supervising you. Yeah. And like that's why I say, like, yes, of course, you're gonna deal with people who going to probably say, Don't do it, but don't let that get don't let that drive you down because here's the thing. People hate people make fun of you when you're at the bottom. They don't care if you're in the middle. They're gonna hate you definitely if you're on top. Right. At this point, <laughs> there's no there is no imp there's no impressing anybody. It's just keep going, keep going. Somebody yes, they're gonna hate you when you're at the top, they're gonna hate you when you're in the middle, they're gonna hate you when you're down. But at this point, wh who cares? Just do your own thing. Right. Oh, oh you are still here. There he is. I've yeah, been... Holly. Oh, oh, you you know. I, I don't know if I don't even want to tell you you won't ever gun chief, but look at you. You're you're gun chief of gun three and you're and you're killing it. And remember that video I posted? You're killing it, my man. Yeah, which is awesome. And just to everybody that's just joined us, hi. Um I see my BK B, BK hitbox girl just joined mm. from Brooklyn and Kristen. Hello, my East Coasters. Yeah, yeah, a lot of my East West Coast, Coast, Coast is still Coast. asleep. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I also read you work with military veterans, and you got the Order of the Purple Heart. What's I that? Did. What's that? For you? receive a military order of the purple heart and I, I you know at that time it was years ago it was gosh might have been 20 years ago or something like that and i you know i hadn't really done too much with military veterans but because my dad was you know in the military mm -hmm. um you know i got to do a little bit of speaking and be around them you know quite a lot so it was always you know, it was always nice to just be able to be in their presence and, and just to say thank you, you know, for their service and um, do whatever I could to, 
you know, let people know, hey, the veterans are, their veterans are important. They're here, they're fighting for us. You know, they fought for us, they were, they're fighting for us. Anyone who's currently in the military, they're fighting for us fighting for our right. freedoms that we hold so, you know, so dear. Yes, and even when they find out, they're still fighting a personal war, their own, the body of trauma they build. And that's another thing people don't seem to understand. They fight their own personal battles on the inside. Like, they may look stoic and uh, strong on the outside, but on the inside, they're probably fighting a whole internal conflict, and they're trying to, that's, what, that's right. why good people, good people like you come in, you help them out, you remind them, hey, Yes, the military. Yes, you may be out of the military, but there's still there's, you still have life to live, and there's no there's there's no uh you got military. There's nothing for you to do now because you still got life to live. You right. still can't. Stop people. And I want to say congrats on the uh, Purple Heart that you got. Thank you. Because now I mean people, I mean people have the patience to deal with veterans. I can tell you, I've seen some people get lose their temper because veterans are not exactly the easiest to work with. Right. Well, <laughs> well, and then depending on, you know, how much activity they've seen, right, and what they've right. actually gone through, I just had the really amazing pleasure and joy of meeting um, some veterans from an organization mm -hmm. called um, the Shadow Warriors. And oh, they, no. yeah, and they, they work with vets to get, um, vets service animals mm -hmm. dogs because when the dogs have been service animals and then when they're done with them they're like well okay what do they do with them so they give them to to veterans so that they can have a you know they have that buddy still oh yes yes and i don't know if you ever heard of corporal levy she was a marine she had a service dog that she mm -hmm. was in iraq with they gave her. They gave her back the dog after she got out of the Marines. Oh, see, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. Yeah, Cole and Megan Levy. If anyone's ever heard of it, there's a movie about her too. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What <laughs> other questions you got for me, Motivator Carter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you you me too much credit already. I do my homework, and I discovered just not too long ago you wrote a book called the power yeah. of the god i did please i want i want to know more about it because like obviously you can give me some points on how to be better on helping women right well i mean i don't know about all that but <laughs> <laughs> it's very yeah i did i it's so funny because every time like when i do something i forget i've done it almost mm -hmm. it's it's really bizarre it's this weird thing that happens with me it's um uh, and yeah i did write this book and i actually i when did it come out i think it came out in like 2018 or 2017 maybe even 17 or 18 <clears throat> and you know one of the things i think when men are working to motivate women mm -hmm. is to not think that we're broken think we're not broken yeah that we're not actually broken that mm -hmm. that we don't need to be fixed right because a man's um natural instinct from a dna level is to fix like i gotta handle this problem i gotta take care of this problem i gotta i gotta fix this thing right and for women yes thank you the power of the goddess um for women, it's like when we're approached as, oh, here, let me fix you because you're broken. Yeah, I have that yeah, problem. That doesn't <laughs> sit so well. <laughs> yeah, I have that problem. I have that, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let me help you. Let me help you. But oh God, I forget. They don't want my help. They want to be independent, which I try to be myself mentally aware of. Sometimes I still have that. Is that what I'm looking for? My, my dad calls it the hero syndrome. Yes. However, this is the caveat. We are looking for a hero. We would never, like a lot of us don't want to admit that, but we do look for a hero. It's like, hey, can I depend on you? Do you have my back? You know, just like in the military, you got to have each other's backs, right? Oh. So we just want to know you've got our back. And for us, the work is to say, okay, I know I can do this myself. I know I can, 
accomplish this. But where can I fa find the balance to work mm -hmm. with, as opposed to pushing against, right? right? And working in synergy together, just like having, you know, this conversation. We're working together to mm -hmm. bring the energy up, as opposed to, oh, no, I just, I'll just do it myself. You know, and I've had that my whole life because, you know, I um, was always, oh, you're just a girl. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, and that was back in the, you know, 60s. I'm born in the 60s. So mm -hmm. it's a very different atmosphere. So those of us who possibly were, you know, and I'm not going to speak for every woman born in the 60s. But at that time, it's like, yeah, we got thrown into that whole, oh, equal rights and this and that, blah, 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 which I'm not saying is not to be in the awareness, because mm -hmm. it is, and let's co-create, let's co, I mean, we're both here on the planet, let's coexist together, where, you know, there may be a woman who's much more brilliant at doing something than a man. And then there's a, there may be a man over here that's much more brilliant than doing it, doing something that a woman does. Yeah. It's about like, find what works for you, what your strength is and move towards that regardless. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like putting out the energy of, you know, bring me into the environment that's going to sustain me right and really help move me forward yes and that, that actually goes that actually, that actually makes a lot of sense it's like everything you say it's like how we should apply everything into every any workforce it shouldn't just be military right but, but like uh what let's see i was thinking about getting it for myself because i wanted to read i want to learn more uh -huh. uh, i don't know is it could, like if a man reads it what would you say a man will learn from that book if they read it I think they will learn a lot about the way in which women think, mm. you know, especially a woman who super independent, but then hit like not, a, not even a road bump. Like I hit like that dark crevice crack in the road and got stuck in yeah. there for a while, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So, It'll actually, I have had a lot of men actually read the book and say, wow, that was so insightful because I deal with strong women all the time. And as a tendency, mm -hmm. strong women aren't very forthcoming with their, hey, I'm vulnerable in this one area, in this yeah. spot. And if you don't treat that spot gently, we just go transformer. Like there's that transformer comes out and it's like, forget it. We go back yeah. into that other shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, seen that. <laughs> I've seen that before. Yeah. That's a good example. Yes, I've seen that before. My question is, um, you're six foot, right? Six yes. foot? Mm -hmm. Okay, I I figured based on watching your movies, you're, you're at least you're you're really you're really a t you're two inches taller than I am. Yeah, and like being six foot, martial arts. Uh, is that how did that help you get into a lot of movies you're in right now? Um, gosh, I'm gonna say that the skill of the martial art got me in more than the height. Uh huh because I was always taller than most actors. <laughs> you know, especially the, <clears throat> you know, like the A-list actors if I was going up against, you know, for a role where, you know, they weren't six foot or taller. <laughs> mm -hmm. That always worked against me. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, which is why I found um, when I, fa when I was, embraced by the stunt world and got yeah. to know the stunt coordinators, they didn't care that I was six foot tall. They were like, this is awesome. And we'll use you in these ways. And I actually worked more 
in stunts really than I did in acting. Wow. Yeah. And they yeah. told me that I would. They said, you know, mm -hmm. not taking anything away from your acting, <clears throat> but you'll work a lot as a stunt woman and possibly cool. more. And uh, they were right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were right. So. Yeah, all I say, like, being stunt, being, it's, stunt work is, like, more tedious than being an actor because you actually got to go through the actual phys the physical uh, part of falling, uh, getting, going thrown through stuff and all that stuff. Is that, is that correct? Well, I'm not going to say that that's actually correct because actors do go through a tremendous, like, I was constantly in acting class. I, mm -hmm. I trained with the same acting coach for 14 years consistently, like, two times a week was always at class working on that craft so that when I got in there, you know, I was always, no, I don't want to say ahead of the game, but for me, it was to be ahead of the game. Uh -huh. right? Now on the stunt aspect of it, stunt performers, I know they train constantly depending on what their specialty is or if they're yeah. all around, they're constantly out there, you know, working out. Constantly out there, if they're a driver, they're constantly out there perfecting their driving skills. If they're a fighter, they're constantly perfecting their fighting skills. If they mm -hmm. use weapons, they're constantly out there perfecting their weapons skills. Because, um, hey, from, a, Ooh, from Malaysia, hello. It's late there. <laughs> it's really late there. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, I'm gonna have to say that I can't really say that one is more puts in more time than the other. It's very yeah. dependent on the person, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if someone, as an example, if somebody does a lot of, um, say, let's just say a lot of gun work, right? Weapons. Yeah. They constantly have to be up on their weapons training, just like you know, oh, yeah. in the military, you work on weapons training all the time. Yes, we do. Same as a stunt person. But if there's an actor that, um, you know, say does a lot of drama or a lot of comedy, they're going to focus and put their mm -hmm. attention on training so that their comedic timing is great, so that their dramatic timing is, is great right when they get into that situation so yeah that's what i would say about that you know wow you know it actually makes sense like basically you're saying consistency is key right and everything you do you gotta be consistent like it's not no just do it one day and then go and go home and then forget all about it i keep practicing right. it on your own in front of others like that's consistency 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 right and when you were in, because like you, you're in like playing, you're in playing movies I, that I watched that I never realized that was you in until I did double take. <laughs> right. First movie I watched you in, obviously it was Mortal Kombat because that was that was my movies. Every time my mom played it, I would start jamming to the music because right. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> it, was, it was something about the music, and baby, I was and one year old me always started jamming to it. Yeah. Uh, it was catchy. It was, it, was, it still is. I mean, my friends hear me play, they'd be like, why are you listening to Mortal Kombat? I said, because you would not understand. It's sketchy. Yeah. But you playing Shifu in that role, like, did that really help you get, like, more, like, I, I know I had to project you forward because you were in uh, Vampires, and then then uh, next thing you know, Mortal Kombat came out afterwards. Did that really, like, project your career in a more uh, positive light because they know that you're, and that you're, uh, you're multi capable of doing more, more than just like one role at a time. Well, <clears throat> Mortal Kombat was first. We shot Mortal Kombat in '97, and then after Mortal Kombat, the stunt coordinator, the original stunt coordinator on Mortal Kombat. Um, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Jan. Thank you. That's that's. Very sweet, yeah, Mortal Kombat. Um, the stunt coordinator who was meant to actually 
do Mortal Kombat, ended up leaving Mortal Kombat, but he went on to becoming the stunt coordinator on Vampires. <laughs> so after I did Mortal Kombat, <clears throat> he had some stunt roles and he was like, hey, I want you to come in and meet, you know, mm -hmm. Sandy and John who are doing, you know, vampires to come in and do a, to be a vampire. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, he's like, and I went in and I met, met with them and he said, you know, they want to, you know, light you on fire. And I was like, what? Um, how about no? How about no? No uh -huh. on the um, fire thing. Because I had never done a fire burn before. So I was like, yeah, I'm a little skittish about that. So uh, I don't think because that's not my expertise. And I don't want to be like, oh, hey, yeah, straight out of the gate. I'm just going to do a fire burn. Mm -hmm. That's a little uh, suspicious to me. You know, it was just it wasn't it was way, way, way out of my comfort zone. So right he ended up coming back and saying, okay, well, they're, they're not going to have you do the fire burn, but why don't you become, you know, they want you to be one of the master vampires. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know what that means, but I, I guess. Oh, all right. And he said, oh, you're just going to have to call crawl out of a grave and this and that. And in my mind, I'm thinking, great. And you know, a cemetery, we're crawling out, you know, it'll be open. We'll just be crawling out. That'll be cool. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, right on. And um, by the time I had, had gotten home that day from that meeting, they had called from special effects and said, hey, we need you to come in to fit your contacts and your costumes and this and that. And I was like, oh, I guess I got this got this vampire role thing. And we were sort of like these chic glam vampires. Anyone who's seen vampires, you know, sees the master vampires, we're all in black and there's like, you know, seven or eight of us or whatever. But when <laughs> the very first day we showed up on set, um, we were in this, this flat, you know, wash down in, um, yes, Jeremy. Yes, Galen was an amazing, amazing woman. We got to work together and absolutely loved her. One of the purest hearts ever. Thank, thank you for that question, Jeremy. Um, we honor Galen George, big time. Um, mm -hmm. So when we, when we did that scene, we got into this, this, you know, dirt wash down in this riverbed mm -hmm. and there were these seven holes plots in the ground with these piles of dirt next to them mm -hmm. and they were like okay go find um one of those plots over there and see which one you fit in yeah like, okay so we all went and laid down at a plot and then they were like okay we're just gonna cover you in dirt now and i was like wait what wait what what <laughs> what? <laughs> uh -huh. So they literally, in that scene, and if you see it in the movie, you watch us all come out of the ground, they literally buried us alive. Yeah, I got, I got, yeah, <laughs> when, when you know, I did, I did, when I first watched it, I jumped. Whoa. Because everybody knows I'm not really a fanatic of horror movies, but when you got, when you came out, I was like. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. I was, I was, that was to date, that to date was one of the toughest things I've ever shot, was that uh -huh. thing. Yeah, that scene. So, but it was fun. I mean, seeing it is like, oh yeah. And then remembering like, wow, laying in there, you know, they, they just put these boxes and had these two cardboard flaps over our face so that the dirt didn't get into our eyes and into our mouth and whatever. But we were literally buried in the dirt from here down. And right. he wanted it very specific of, he's like, okay, put your hands out first and then sit up and then come out. And I was like, oh gosh we had a walkie-talkie <laughs> inside to let us know you know when to come up mm -hmm. like, whew. Whew. <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> wow i i well wow. at this point i'm never going to say that i don't know what actors go through again because they have to they have they got to do strict regimes just like we do uh-huh yes i'm sure and i was yeah. like once was enough boom that was mm -hmm. yeah
That was enough for me. <laughs> you said vampires came out before Mortal Kombat? No, vampires came out after. Oh, that, that was a good question. Like, we had to play villain roles because, like, I can tell, like, at this point, I know who you are at this point, so I know what role you're playing. When right. you're playing villain roles, did it help you, like, help you out better when you had to play villain roles? Because, like, you, like when you, when you play villain roles, like, you got that look in your face that says, I am, I am, I'm that evil woman that will try to kill you. So, did that help you out? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> okay, you know, Ghost of Mars, you know, Ghost of Mars, when I show you that video, right, and you yes. like, crazy eye, and like, you know, you was doing this, that thing with your fingers. Right. Like, I was like, wait a second, I've seen that look before. So, I watched Mortal Kombat, and I saw that same look. So, I went downstairs, went downstairs and looked at it again. I was like, is that you? And you said, that is me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is you. Like, at this point, it's not hard to figure out who you are. Right. <laughs> so I was like, did, did, like play, did, did playing these uh, roles make it easier for you uh, to do these uh, kind of um, to do these kind of horror movies? You know, I never really sought out to do any kind of horror movies because I don't like horror movies. Period. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> And so for me to actually be in a couple horror movies, I was like, whoa. And the only reason I was really in those two was because of John Carpenter. John Carpenter is a legend. And I was like, I will work with John all day long because he's such a master. And having that opportunity was just, was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. I love I love John Carver. First movie I watched is 1976 Assault on Precinct 13. I'm like, hold up. Like, I, I know it's not a horror movie, but at the same time, they kind of do horror like things because like they come out of nowhere. Yes. So yeah. yeah, he he yeah, I like his movies. I like the music he has in his movies. His uh, the way he has his movies play out is like, I'm not trying to make it scary, but at the same time, I'm gonna make y'all think that they got almost a ghost like uh, appearance. Yeah. Yeah, he's a master. So working with him was an absolute, you know, it was it's a highlight for sure mm -hmm. of the career. Yeah. If I if I if I ever met John Carpenter, I'd say thank you for re revisualizing how movies should be played out. Yeah, yeah, he's really he's a master. Yes, Absolute master. Like, and another thing I know about movies, so maybe you can attest to it. Villains they work well together, but. But heroes, they kind of like are like at odds with each other. <laughs> it That's seems like that, huh? They're like, yeah, they they make it like that, that the heroes can't work together, but the villains work really well together. Hmm. Yeah. That's kind of strange. Yeah. Maybe a little like real life there. Yeah, nineteen seventy six. His so on three precinct thirteen. Yeah. He has a multiracial gang. Then there's the heroes. They oh, they, our main our main character is a black guy. We don't like him because he's black, but. The villains, they don't care what color you are. Just we're going to work together. Yeah. Because we're going to have a common goal. We're going to hurt somebody. <laughs> Vampires, okay. We know what we want to do. We want to we drink blood and kill people. Villains, okay. We don't, we uh, our heroes, we look at each other we're like, mm, yeah, your method's stupid or your method's stupid. We don't know how to work together. And then Ghost of the Mars. You got criminals and you got prisoners and you got police officers working together, but at the same time, they hate each other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, they, 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 finally, they realize, like, hey, we all got to get out of here. Yeah, and there's so, possessed. Yeah. There's possessed. They work together. Like, yes, they don't talk much, but obviously they, they work together. Yeah. And other than that, uh, you have any questions for me? I, I have none left. You have none left? Okay, let's see. What else can I ask you? What's your next move? What's your next move for you? Wow. Wow. I Give know. You Give are. The so, go, you know, go. Motivator Marjean's going to put you on the spot. <laughs> skip, skip these talk ball questions and go straight to football. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, never asked, I, I barely get asked questions like that, so I've never been able to answer honestly before. Honestly, my next move is, since I was able to do this with you, uh, and I and you're not the only actress who follows me back on Instagram, I was going to take this motivation and go push it further. Because I'm almost done with my book that I've been writing for a while. Uh huh. Good. I was, I was hoping I could publish my book, or I'd find someone who's willing to publish my book. Awesome. I don't know anybody right now. Uh, post this video on you on my YouTube and uh, on Instagram. Good. Uh, the next move is um, 
Well, I'm, I'm almost done with school too, so graduate college. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, Enjoy the small victories first. There you go. Hey, finishing college is no small victory. Writing a book, no mm -hmm. small victory. So, but to a Marine, those could be considered small victories now that I think about it. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, I won't say unfortunately, sometimes the small victories, it's what everybody would say, it's a big victory. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so. it is, I'll say it's, it's a big victory because <laughs> I'm the first in my family to actually graduate from college. Oh, congratulations. So that's that's going to be great. So Thank you definitely so much. keep me in touch and, you know, I know you'll message me and let me know, like, when all that's happening. I will. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I graduated January 23rd. January 23rd. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's coming up close. Oh, yes. It's, it's got coming one up. Class. Oh, my gosh. One more class to take, and then I got to wait till Thanksgiving and Christmas pass, and then I can in the New Year's, and I can graduate school. Wow. Good for you. There you I go. Appreciate you. There you go. How about you? What is your next move? So, my next move is I am just recently. Um, finished rewriting a script. So the next move uh -huh. is just continuing to put energy out there to have somebody um, finance us so that we can make this movie. It's a, um, it's an undercover cop, buddy cop movie and rolls into a series. So it's three veteran officers, I'll call them, as opposed to aged officers that go undercover as an 80s rock band to bust a drug and trafficking ring. Like, 20, like, jump, like 21 Jump Street? Or 20 a little jump bit street. like that, only they're a little older. A little bit older than the Jump Street guys. <laughs> so yeah, so we're doing that and, um, you know, just putting it out there to, to have the finance for that and everywhere I can talk about it and go, okay, look, we need an angel investor. We put the money into this mm -hmm. and, you know, and then we'll go from there. We've got, I've got, you know, one of a couple other of my Mortal Kombat um, cast mates. So it was actually written, originally written by Darren McBee who played Matoro. So he's yeah, the star definitely. of it. He's the star mm -hmm. of it. So, yeah. And Gary Casper, who was a big, um, you know, actor, and he was in the wrestling, hall wrestlers, WWF. So we've got some yeah. good cast members. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's good. I can't wait to see. I can't wait for that movie to come out. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. fun. Instruments of Justice. Keep it in your mind. Instruments of Justice. I'll, yeah. I'll write down my book. Yeah. So thank you for asking to do this live with me. I really appreciate it. And I'm so grateful that I can, you know, help you out with your motivation and, you know, all that you're doing and congratulations and keep <laughs> writing your book and finish that. And school's going to be done here soon. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then I know you'll be on to pursuing, cause I know you got a little actor in there. As I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a little bit in there, and I was actually trying to. I was gonna say, if you got any more gigs, let me know. I, I'll try. I'll show you my my best attempts at acting, or I'll just yeah. my best attempts at comedy. Either way, I at this point, I feel like I can do anything at this point because yeah, because I I went to boot camp. Someone said yeah. I, I, I was I wasn't going to make it. Yeah, I graduated from the school. They said I wasn't going to last a week. Yeah, about to graduate. I, they said I wasn't going to graduate boot camp. I'm a marine now. Four years in now. That's right. So, at this and point, your, I, and, I, yeah, and with your military background, you know, they always need, you know, anytime there's a military project, because you're in the East Coast, you know, if they've got anything military going on and you ever see anything for them, like, hey, we need military, real military to mm -hmm. even just to be background or whatever, do it, jump on it. I will. Yeah. And I do, I appreciate you for uh, coming to the live because I, and seriously, I thought, you was going to be like, eh, I don't think I could do that. But you said, yes, because you said you want to help me, and I appreciate it. Yeah. That shows, that shows how genu genuine you are. Yeah. I won't, I can't say every actor is not genuine, but right. some are more genuine than others, and you are very yeah. genuine. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't do a lot of lives. I haven't done a live forever. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's, like I said to you, when, you know, spirit says, yep, do this. I go, okay. Cause I've learned my lesson that when I, <laughs> when I go against that and go, yeah. no, I'm not going to do that. It's like, mm, okay. But yeah, it was like, yeah, do this. This will be an yeah. honor. So I appreciate it. Thank and you. this is, this is a great honor and blessing for you to do this with me. Yeah. Well, thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you everybody who joined us on this live. And the words of uh, Shiva, a.k.a. Margie Holden, the, the day's over. over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, All right, Tyreek, take care. You too, Margie. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you soon. You too. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody.